All right, well, let's pretend like we know what's going on, okay? So here we go. Yesterday, you found terminal points in a unit circle. And you found exact trigonometric values for those pieces. Today, we're going to start with this example to build off of yesterday. It says find sine of t, cosine of t, and tangent of t. Do you remember which value was sine? So it's 12 over 13. Do you remember which value is cosine? Negative 5 over 13. Do you remember how to find tangent? Y over X. So that's 12 over 13 divided by negative 5 over 13. Multiply by the reciprocal. 13's cancel. I get negative 12 over 5. Piece upside down, right? Wrong. The definition of sine is y if you're working in the unit circle. If you're not in the unit circle, it's y over r. Are you sure that negative 5 over 13, 12 over 13 is a point in the unit circle? It is. <laughs> we will show that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 and show that this is in the unit circle. What do you give you squared negative 5 over 13? 25 over 169. What if you square 12 over 13? 144 over 169. Add those together. Do you get 169 over 169? You do, and that's 1, isn't it? So you are in the unit circle. It's <laughs> so. <laughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Do you know if negative two-thirds and negative root of five over three, do you know if that's in the unit circle? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Are you convinced that that's in the unit circle? You are? Let's check. Square negative two over three, and you get four over nine. Square negative root of five over three, and you get five over nine. Does that add to nine over nine? So it is in the unit circle. So I can do sine of t is equal to negative root of 5 over 3. I can say cosine of t is equal to negative 2 over 3. And I can say that the tangent of t is equal to, well, I divide those two, won't I? I'll take negative root of 5 over 3, and I'll divide it by negative 2 thirds, or multiply by negative 3 halves. Negatives cancel, so do the threes. I get negative root of 5 over 2. What do you want? Uh, 5. Sorry about that. I, I'm, get, I'm getting sloppy with my handwriting. I apologize, Marty. I'm normally much more kind of well-mannered, but sometimes students kind of put you over the edge. What? Yeah, student. Sometimes a student puts you over the edge. Yeah, what did I do? Oh, yeah, thank you, positive. Thank you, Samuel. Samurai. Okay, 3, negative 7. Do you think 3, negative 7 is in the unit circle? Why? Exactly. If you were to consider the unit circle, if you were to consider unit circle, and then you were to consider the point 3, negative 7, that would be over 3 and down 7. That would be a point like out there, wouldn't it? Yeah, not even close. So that's where you can't think of just the y value for sine. You think of y over r. But we don't know r yet, do we? So let's figure it out. 3 squared, not in the unit circle, only if you're in the unit circle. We know we're not in a unit circle now. What's 3 squared? 9. What's 7 squared? <laughs> so I get 58 is equal to r squared. So what's r? r is the square root of 58. <laughs> so there. <laughs> I'm sorry, YouTube Nation. They're, they're, they're giving me a very bad look right now because we came up with a bad number. It's not a pretty number. 
I feel like they did the problem wrong because they got the root of 58. I'm trying to teach them that irrational numbers are beautiful, but I'm obviously failing at my job. I should get a pay cut. <laughs> All right. So we got C is uh, what? Oh, okay, so sine is going to be negative 7 over the root of 58. Can we leave it like that? Can we get negative 7 roots of 58 over 58? And that's the exact, exact value of sine for a terminal point of 3, negative 7. Okay, what about cosine? <laughs> Three roots of 58 over 58. What about tangent? This is y over x, folks. Wow. Yeah, very good. It does. You don't like it. Okay, well, you're going to learn to like it. All right, Pythagorean and other identities. Flip to your very last page. Time to take some notes by hand, nothing that's structured for you. We need to learn the fundamental and most important formulas of trigonometry. Are you ready? Yes. And I want to be clear. I will not just make anything up. I'm going to show you where they all come from. And we start here. All trigonometry starts with a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Are you good? We also learned that that's the same as the formula for a circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Are you good? In the unit circle, the radius is 1. So therefore, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Oh, hey. There's something really cool. Yesterday, you learned that the y value is the same as sine, and the x value is the same as. So therefore, this formula becomes the cosine of theta squared plus the sine of theta squared is equal to 1. Now, in trigonometry and mathematics, we like to shorten things up if at all possible. We don't like the parentheses. If we take the parentheses off, then it looks like you're squaring theta, doesn't it? So instead, we put these exponents right there after the sine and the cosine. And in this situation, they always write sine first. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. That is fundamental trigonometric identity Number one, super important. You can never forget it. The rest of your mathematical career needs to be locked in your brain, ready to go. What is the capital of the United States of America? And in a, you know, in a two weeks, when I say sine squared plus cosine squared, you better say one. <laughs> oh boy, Washington D.C. Just like you know Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States of America, and you know the sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. It's always got to be ready to go. You're going to use it all the time. Yes? A good point. Yep, Kansas City is in bold. Can I ask you a different question? Why do you park on a driveway and drive on a parkway? Good question, huh? If a fly didn't have wings, would we call it a walk? Why do drive-up ATM machines have Braille? Should you really be driving if you're blind? There's all sorts of really good questions out there, and we don't know the answers to them all. But we do know this. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Now, we can do something else here that's really, really, really cool. Okay? Yesterday, you also told me this. What is y divided by x? That is tangent of theta. Well, y is the same as sine of theta. x is the same as. So, therefore, tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. That 
is important identity number two. It is not trigonometric, but it's super important. We use it all the time. For the rest of your math career, you need to know that tangent is sine over cosine. What? I'm going to give you, we still have two more. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is super important. But what we could do is because we have an equation, we could do things as both sides of the equal sign in order to produce a new equation. What I would like to do is instead of adding something to both sides, I would like to divide through by something. And I'm going to divide through by cosine squared. I know that looks crazy, but we're going to do it because it's going to produce for us a new formula. Who can tell me what is sine over cosine? Tangent. So sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Thank you, Parth. You are super amazing and smart. What is cosine squared over cosine squared? One. Do you remember from yesterday what one over cosine squared is? 1 over cosine is the same as secant. So we have secant squared of theta. This is number 3. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. Super important to know. The last one we're going to do today, again, starts with sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. Hey, instead of dividing through by cosine squared, what should I divide through by? Sine squared. When I do that, what is sine squared divided by sine squared? 1. What's cosine over sine? Well, sine over si blah, blah, blah. sine over cosine was Tangent, so cosine over sine is cotangent, so we get cotangent squared. And what's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant, so I get cosecant squared of theta. That is super important formula number four. Second part of our notes is to talk about the positive and the negative quadrants. So I'm going to build a quadrant here. We're going to call it quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. These all have coordinates that sit in the quadrants. We're going to talk about those coordinates. And we're going to talk about sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta for all of them. All right, here's what we know. In the first quadrant, our coordinate pair is positive and positive. What do we know about the second quadrant? Negative and positive. Third quadrant? Fourth quadrant? Good. Any question there? So then we move on to the value of sine, cosine, tangent. Sine is the y value. So in the first quadrant, sine is positive. In the first quadrant, we have, uh, again, positive, positive values. Cosine is x value, so cosine is positive as well. Tangent is y divided by x, so I take a positive, divide by positive, I get a positive. So you can see that all three are positive in the first quadrant. Any question? All right, so you tell me. Second quadrant, what do I got? 
sine's positive, cosine's negative, and tangent is negative. Everybody clear on that? How about third quadrant? Why is tangent positive? So negative divided by negative is a positive. Good. Fourth quadrant. We got a negative for sine. Got a positive for cosine. And I got a negative for tangent. You need to know all of these. I'm going to give you two ways to remember them. I'll give you my way, and I'll give you other people's way. Are you ready? Sine is y. Y is positive up. It's negative down. So sine is positive up. Sine is negative down. See that? Cosine is x. So x is positive to the right, negative to the left. So cosine is positive to the right. It's negative to the left. Tangent is y over x. So if it's same sign, it's positive. If it's opposite sign, it's negative. That's how I remember it. Other people remember it a different way. They feel like they can't remember that, so they use something else. They use kind of like these, I don't know, acronym or these memory type things. Like, like my daughter the other day, she was trying to memorize the compass, so north, east, south, west. So she's like, nobody eats soggy waffles. And we got one of those that works for them for something. Never eat shredded wheat. <laughs> Haven't heard that one. Okay, cool. Like it. I love shredded wheat. So. Never eat sour worms. Okay, does somebody have something different than the compass? Just make them up as you go and then you forget them. That's why they're really helpful because you forget them. <laughs> no, it's okay. I get it. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Oh, I forgot about it. That's right. What? Kane Phillip drinks grape soda. They don't. Kane Phillip doesn't play chess while playing grape soda. All right, here we go. So the one that we have for this is all students take calculus. I never learned it. Uh, I showed up teaching one day here, and uh, people said, oh, yeah, all students take calculus. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I actually found it in a textbook, and so it sounds dumb. But that's just how I remembered it, folks. I said, why is positive? Up, negative down, so sine is positive up, negative down. That's how I think of it all the time. But here's what people do. They say all, so all are positive here. Students, so sine is positive here. Take, so tangent is positive here. Calculus, so cosine is positive here. All students, see, I see you guys like it. See, I yeah, I'm not, I'm not a real big guy in gimmicks. I just like to remember the way it goes, but a lot of people like all students take calculus. That's a smart what YouTube they are blown away by that. They they would I should charge I sh I should charge like money for that. Like I'll give you a secret for how to remember that for a dollar. You guys would just sign up right and left, wouldn't you? Google it? Yeah, you probably can. Okay. So good work. You've got all of the pieces in place. That's the notes. Now your question is what are we gonna use this for? Here you go. Back up to example three. That's what we need to do. Do A and B, and you're done for the day. Long lesson today, folks. Find the values of six trigonometric functions given the following information. Sine of T, cosine of T, tangent of T, cosecant of T, secant of t and cotangent of t. You get this problem on the test, and I get people who write this, IDK. And so what I do is I call home to so your mom and dad, and I tell them that you're not cut out for the class, and I don't believe you're cut out for college. And uh, people say, well, you're reacting way too strongly to that. And, and I don't think I am. I don't think I am. I don't think you're cut out for college if you can't get a couple points here. And I'll tell you why. Um, we already know something about one of these six. What do we know? Yeah, sine is negative 4 over 5. 
So when I go through these and people still write IDK on tests, they don't write down any of them. I, I, again, I would argue, no, nope, I would not be. Like, if you want to pay your own way through college, you go ahead. But I'm not investing in that. Okay. How about I could do this, cosec NFT. What's the relationship between sign and cosecant? Yeah, reciprocal. So negative five over four. I would say two quick, easy points. Would you agree? So you do that, you can avoid the phone call home. If you don't do that, I'm calling your mom and dad. It ain't going to turn out pretty when I, when I have that conversation. We all good? You look scared. <laughs> you look scared. Like, wow. Is he serious? I am. It's a really awkward conversation. But when I show them what they're asked to do, and, and, and then at conferences, they actually, they actually do an example in front of me where they're able to write down those two. And, and they're like, wow, I was able to do that. I didn't even know any trigonometry. I'm like, exactly. I said, that's why you need to be concerned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I know sine, can I find cosine? How? <laughs> sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Good. What do I get if I square negative four fifths? So 16 over 25 plus cosine squared of theta is equal to, instead of one, I'm going to write So therefore, cosine squared of theta is equal to nine over 25. Square root, I get cosine theta is plus or minus 3 over 5. Is it positive or is it negative? I'm in the third quadrant. Is cosine positive or negative in the third quadrant? Negative. So I've got negative 3 over 5. Oh, that wasn't a big deal, was it? So now what do we know? Reciprocal. Tangent is just sine over cosine, right? So we're going to use sine over cosine. You take sine, which is negative 4 over 5, and you divide it by negative 3 over 5. That's the same as multiplying by 5 over negative 3. As you can see, the 5s cancel, the negatives cancel. I get 4 thirds. So what's cotangent? 3 fourths. And I am done. Look at that. Because the mic is expensive. My like fourth mic in five years. Every time I sit it down, it the kind of the wires inside get loose. So anyway, that, that's not too bad, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, definitely get much more difficult. <laughs> All right. So uh, the example you just saw on your worksheet also involved three, four, and five. Uh, so that's just to kind of get you used to using some of the formulas. Uh, so we're going to change letter B. We're going to change it to cotangent of t is equal to negative two. And cosecant of t is less than zero. And uh, given that information, you'd like to find all six. So here's where we need to step up our game and, and you know do some really good work here. Okay. So I've got sine of t, cosine of t, tangent of t, cosecant of t, secant of t, and cotangent of t. What do I know right away? Cotangent is negative 2. What else do I then know? Sweet. I avoided the phone call home from Mr. Gentz. Uh, nope. Nope. Still call home. If I just get the negative 2, then I call home. Why don't you take a reciprocal? <laughs> negative 1 half avoids that phone call home. Yep. 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 All right. So then um, the question is, what do I do now? Well, so if I said sine equal to sine over cosine equal to tangent, I still got two unknowns, don't I? And if I do sine squared plus cosine squared, I still have two unknowns. 
Yeah, so I'd have tangent equal to something I don't know over something I don't know. So. Yep, we know 1 plus tangent square root of theta is equal to secant square root of theta. Cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant square root of theta. So you can see that you have two other formulas that are very important that you get to make use of. So you've got 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared. So the question is, would you rather square a negative 2 or would you rather square a negative 1 half? I'd rather square the negative 2, yeah. So I got 1 plus 4 is cosecant squared, or 5 is cosecant squared of theta. Square root both sides, and you have plus or minus the root of 5 is equal to cosecant of theta. So is it positive or negative? It doesn't tell us which quadrant we're working in, does it? It does say cosecant is less than zero. Very good. But what if it said secant was less than zero? Would we be able to know then? And the answer is yes. But you got to set it up like this. Okay. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to draw a quick little quadrant right here. I'm going to look at the information I've given to determine the values of positive or negative. This is where this is the final step to, to make a confusing process uh, hopefully come to light for you. But this is important. You miss positive and negatives on the test, I take off two points. Because that's a big step, big step in the process. Okay? So we got tangent, we got cotangent. Tangent is negative. Where is tangent positive? One and three. So where is tangent negative? So I'm either in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant. One of the two. Well, it says that cosecant is less than zero. What does it mean for something to be less than zero? Negative. So cosecant is negative, which means that sine is negative as well. Where is sine positive? First and second, so it's negative in the third and fourth. So which quadrant am I working in then? The fourth quadrant. And you know in the fourth quadrant, you got sine is negative, tangent is negative, and cosine is positive. So when we get to cosine and secant, we know those results are going to be positive. So I figure that out. So I use those two pieces of information to uh, determine my positive and negative values. We said cosecant is going to be the root of 5, and it's negative, so negative root of 5. What value do I then know? So what sign? 1 over the root of 5, which is root of 5 over 5. Good work. Still got to come up with what? Got to come up with cosine. So I'll use my sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. I take sine and I square it, what do you get? Root of 5 squared is 5. 5 squared is 25, so you get 1 fifth. Plus cosine squared is equal to, I'll write as 5 fifths. So therefore, cosine squared of theta is equal to 4 fifths. Square root both sides. Cosine theta is equal to plus or minus 2 over the root of 5. Was it positive or negative? We determined positive. Can I leave it as 2 over the root of 5? Multiply top and bottom by the root of 5 and get 2 roots of 5 over 5. Now I'm going to show you something to save yourself time. I would have to flip this for secant, right? Notice how the square root goes back in the denominator? It's kind of a pain in the butt, isn't it? So look, you got this right here. You got 2 over the root of 5. Let's just flip that. I mean, those are the same, aren't they? So let's just flip that. What do you get? 
root of 5 over 2. So sometimes you can look around at your work and you have things around that are going to help you as you kind of pop them in there. So Those are your six values. The key is that you know how to use sine squared, cosine squared equals 1, and uh, 1 plus tangent squared, secant squared, sine over cosine, that you know the quadrants. So this tests a lot of really important pieces that you, you should know. Also good arithmetic. You've got everything in front of you. You've got seven minutes, which is more than any other class had, to work on this assignment right now. You could probably get two or three problems done yet. But this is not, this is not a seven-minute assignment, folks. This is, you're going to need to take some time today and tomorrow and work through this. It's going to take a little while. Fortunately, you're extremely intelligent. Think about how tough it would be if you were not intelligent.